Namaskar. Today, meditation has become the new fad, especially in cultures that are not familiar with the practice. But there are still a fair number of people that are afraid to meditate for one reason or another. So I would like to address those fears and see how we can resolve them. The fear, first fear, of course, is fear of the unknown. Because we normally, when we close our eyes, we are going to sleep. But in meditation, of course, we are trying to maintain a certain type of awareness and concentration. And so that's why we say in our, in our channel, close your eyes and open your mind. This is what happens when we do meditation well. Another fear is the fear of losing control of our bodies and minds. Actually, throughout the meditation practice, our own mind is doing the practice itself. And we, we explain that the mind is an entity where thoughts are constantly emerging and dissolving. So this endless flow of thought is what keeps us securely bound within our, our bodies and our physical environment. So in a, in a well done meditation, we may temporarily lose the awareness of our body in a state of deep mental peace, inner focus. And we haven't left our bodies. It's something like when we sleep. We are sleeping, but we're not aware of our bodies at that moment. And we become aware again when we wake up. So with a good meditation, this may occur. And it may last longer as we meditate more. We become used to that state and it may last longer as we gradually increase the length of our meditation and, and improve in our ability to, to detach from the external world. So I remember in the very beginning stages of my meditation, one time I had a very nice experience where I, I, I lost awareness of my body. I felt that I was a, like a point floating in, in the eternal now. And there was a deep mental focus and silence, which is very enjoyable. So, so it's something like jogging or, you know, riding a bicycle. In the beginning, we can't ride more than, you know, a few, few, few blocks and we'll, we'll fall down. Or we, may, we can't jog more than, you know, 300 meters. We're very tired. But the more we practice cycling, the more we practice the jogging, our bodies become adjusted to those exercises and we can do them for longer. So in our Meditation Steps channel, we say to meditate, try to meditate twice a day for 20 minutes morning and evening at that target. And so there's a gradual transformation that occurs. Another fear is the fear of like maybe a, a ghost or evil spirit will inhabit my body if I, if I meditate too strongly. Actually, this doesn't happen. It might happen in the movies, but not in real life. So, you know, my master explained that the ghost sight is usually people, it's usually the figment of their own imagination. They, because they think about these things in their spare time, and so they might project it outward sometimes. And that is common, commonly referred to as, as a ghost. So, but again, with the practice of the meditation, the guidance of a, a, of a teacher, uh, these fears will not arise. The next fear is the fear of giving up our favorite foods, our favorite habits, maybe our friends or relatives. Actually, you know, meditation has traditionally, you know, been associated with renunciates or monks. And, but nowadays, more and more lay people are doing the practice. So that misperception is, is disappearing. And in our channel, we also say that meditation is for everyone. And we might think that going to the forest or the cave is uh, advantageous to meditate, but actually it's not true because those thoughts we have in our, in our mind, in the midst of our physical environment, whether we go to the forest or the cave, those thoughts are still going to be there. So better would be to mentally detach from those thoughts at the time of the meditation. And that's what you learn in your first lesson of meditation from your teacher, your dada, or your didi. You learn how to do that. And then you enjoy the best of both worlds. We're seeking to 
develop that inner focus and mental peace, the inner world, while remaining within our family and our jobs, maintaining our responsibilities to our, to our family and our workplace. And so this is the ideal way to live. So then sometimes people think that, you know, if I meditate, well, maybe I can escape, you know, um, it's, they use it as an, an escape valve, escape the problems of, of life. <laughs> but if we don't have that willpower to meditate, you know, we want to, you know, escape from responsibility, then we won't have the willpower to meditate well, because consciousness-based meditation requires an effort. And it's not an escape from the world, it's rather gathering our mental resources and strengthening us to face the challenges of life. And that is what, you know, meditation gives us that strength. What might change though, uh, instead of giving up the habits or the friends, is we might change some of our lifestyle activities because we may want more time for meditation. So we may give up certain unnecessary activities or reduce them, like reducing the our internet surfing by an hour or trying to cut down on our gossiping with friends, maybe leaving a habit like uh, drinking or smoking or pornography, they detract from our overall well-being. And so in this way, you know, with the practice of the meditation, and we teach, of course, in our channel, the yamas and niyamas, the five, the ten common sense rules of living. They give us that strength to bravely face down and and solve the problems that inevitably come in everyone's life. And then there is the, I remember one very uh, wonderful story I heard from, uh, I think I shared it in one of my, my talks. It was a, about an early disciple. He said to the master, I can never give up, I can't imagine myself giving up eating meat. I love meat so much. And the master said, don't worry about that. Just meditate every day, twice a day regularly. And so he followed the master's advice and sure enough, after six months, somehow the desire completely left him. And it, that's what is the effectiveness of a consciousness-based meditation technique, because it's a slow gradual transformation of our mental wave, of our hormonal secretions, our glands, our bodies. We become more refined and subtle human beings. And this is the proof of the progress in meditation, although it's, it seems to be very slow and because sometimes we struggle so much in a meditation, we don't think we're doing well at all, but we actually are on a subtler level. Changes are going on. Then there's the fear of losing my culture because, you know, meditation, yoga has always been associated with Indian culture. It's part of their kind of their cultural tradition. So, you know, the orange dress and the beard and the long hair, the uh, greeting of Namaskar, the Babanam Kevalam, which is in Sanskrit language. So these external appearances might make some people afraid. But as we explain in our channel, very rationally, a common in co based on common sense, vibrational science, these are some of the reasons why these external appearances have some, they, they can be explained. It's not a dogmatic belief. And, you know, uh, Sada Shiva, the, the founder of the tantric tradition which we follow, when he was asked, what are the requirements to meditate? <laughs> he said, a human body and a human mind. So we are all qualified to meditate, regardless of our background or our social status, education, and so on. And there's another advantage to living in the world and not escaping to the forest. So that's, we have an opportunity to do service. No. And that service, when we do it, actually it, it uplifts our, our spirit, our mind, and brings us closer to that universal loving entity which is behind everything. So that is another useful reason to remain in the world and not escape. So these are some of the points I'd like to share and some of the fears people might have, whether it's losing their culture, losing their identities, being inhabited by evil spirits, or the, their inability to meditate well, Everything can change, and that, that goal where we're trying to feel the, the subtle vibrations, the subtle presence of that 
infinite consciousness, which is in, within our own minds and within all minds and all things, it becomes less imaginary and more real in our life as, as we meditate more. And finally, of course, we strive to reach that merger into infinite consciousness, the goal of meditation. So be brave, don't stop until the goal is reached. Thank you. Namaskar.